I have ADHD and I was reading the prompter and everyone was so excited right before it coming out. I was like, wait, you're distracting, squirrel. I was like, yeah. That, and do you get that everywhere you go? People no. People just applauding. No. <laughs> yeah. oh, only with you. Okay. Only with you. I like our I'm show I'm so then. happy yes. to be back. I know, oh didn't we just gosh. had Chelsea here. She yeah. told me she had the best time. Yeah, oh I love God. her so much. Oh. She's so cool. She did tell me, though, that her kids have been putting on shows for you. My kids put on shows for me all you the time. It. All the time. Yeah. Yes. I mean, we have a nine-year-old uh, granddaughter, seven- and four-year-old grandsons. Yeah. And they're so different, but they all love to kind of bring us in to their plays and yeah. their stories. Entertain. And, oh, my gosh. They, I have a nine- and seven-year-old as well, so same well, age. So you know exactly. Yeah. And... And the four-year-old, his idea of a play is to start talking and never stop. <laughs> and and yeah. then the bad guys. The bad guys met more bad guys. And then they met the good guys. And the good guys, they beat up the bad guys. I mean, you know, it goes on and on. And I'm sitting there. This is one of my children. And the best part is when they finish, they'll both be like, you know what, we can do it better. And I'm like, OK. <laughs> and then we watch it again. It's amazing. It's, it is so wonderful, yeah. though. I mean, you want to it's see so cool that, to see the light that up. energy and, yeah. and the excitement that they get on their faces when they want to share something with you. And so I, I love when they come out. We, we live an hour north of the city, and they live with us during COVID. Yeah. So that That's was a time. Cool. Oh, it was the only good thing about that yeah, really terrible family time. period. It was so nice, Kelly. And yeah. So that we did that all day long. I mean, yeah. it was like, I have an idea. Let's do this. And uh, you know, sometimes it was like seven o'clock, six thirty a.m. in the morning. Yeah. And be like, Grandma, I got this new idea. We have to go oh, figure no, it out. Oh no, mine are clever. <laughs> they know when bedtime's coming, and they're like, we have this show we want to put on. Starting at 7.30, <laughs> I'm like, no, ma'am, you should have oh, showed me that earlier. Yeah. I'm like, you're just trying to stall. 100%. Clever points, yeah, but yeah. no. Um, you've had a memoir, and now your husband is having a memoir that's coming out. Do you? I'm curious, because I will never write a memoir. <laughs> Not enough people are dead. And so... And, <laughs> Yeah. Well, if you live long enough. It's, I'm just saying. It's like, well, because it's like, you, you don't want the truth. <laughs> you know, sometimes you don't. And and so, I, it just must be, do you go over it with each other? Of like, oh, yeah. this is what I've put in there? Yeah, because, I mean, we, we started a conversation literally 50 years ago, and it just keeps going and going and going. And yeah. so, when he uh, was writing this memoir, which is about his life after the White House, um, I would read a draft and, and talk to him about it, and he would ask me questions. And the same with anything I write. And it's great, because... You get, you do get honest feedback. Yeah. It, 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 it's rare to get really honest feedback, but you know we give each other, uh, you know, very good feedback. Oh, you gotta have those people yeah. in your yeah. life. You do. Or even to be like, well, that's clever, selective memory. That's not how that happened. <laughs> yeah. But you know that happened. But people you know, truly believe. People they do. believe it. Yeah. And, you know, when I wrote my memoir, Living History, I had a great researcher who would help me, and I and we did a lot of interviewing. And I would say, well, and then I did this, and then I did that, and we had this meeting and all that. And then she would go and, and she would interview other people and she would also look at the paper record. She'd come back and said, no, that, that meeting wasn't then. I said, oh, yeah, it was. Oh, no, sequential no, it order? Wasn't. Yeah. The order, the chronology yeah, yeah, yeah. that, you know, you get kind of confused as well, you so much live happens. long enough. Yeah, 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 things, yeah. A lot of things happen in everybody's life. And so it's really useful to have a kind of check, like, oh, no, that didn't happen that way. You know, there yeah. were other people there. Yeah, it is hilarious. Uh, that that's a whole show. We should I'd buy your me I'd buy show. your memoir. Yeah. Well, you'll never buy it. It'll never happen. <laughs> so, I love this. You wrote an article recently about loneliness affecting democracy. So, explain what you mean by that. You know, there's just a lot of evidence now that people um, are lonelier than ever, and part of it is coming out of COVID. I think there's been a big spike in loneliness. Part of it is that, you know, we spend a lot of time with our you know, faces looking at a screen, not other people, not connecting with other people. But the loneliness is a, it's a kind of emotional, psychological, mental health issue. But there are people, sadly, who weaponize that loneliness, who set people against each other who are lonely. So oh, They're you know, called they're, narcissists and they, well, they isolate uh, you. <laughs> thank you for that, Kelly. They yeah. are narcissists. Yeah. And, and they, they try to divide people. And one of the way they, ways they do it is by preying on people's fears and their anxieties and, you know, the, the sense that everybody has that they are kind of alone right now. Yeah. And the Surgeon General of the United States has done a lot of work on this and done a lot of studying and looking at how people are feeling about themselves and feeling isolated. 
And, and and it's something that we should pay attention to and yeah. figure out how we can try to overcome it and give people solutions uh, so that they can deal with it. it. It is interesting because like even like I was texting, we have a huge group text going on or whatever. We talk so much in those texts, but we rarely see each other at dinners or we rarely see each other because we're always working. We're such a society that's constantly going. Right. And, it, and I was thinking about it, I was like, God, I, I rarely, like even the band and I, we all have like kids, we all have like lives going on, but like we always like text, but we never actually spend like quality time anymore. And I think that that does make you lonely. It does. Yeah. It, do I, I mean, it does. And you know, as, as important as it is to be the best parent you can be, you, you can't allow yourself to get socially isolated as a parent, and yeah. we have to make more time, and I try to do that, and you should try to do Carving that. out time is, is hard. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, like there's nothing like friends, well. and especially, you know, your girlfriends. I have yeah. friends that I've had since I was, you know, in elementary school, Yeah, and they're the ones who say, oh, come on, get over yourself. You yeah. Know, really? <laughs> Build a bridge, walk across it, yeah. ma'am. Yeah. Come on, you can yeah. do this. Yeah, exactly. You, you actually went to Wellesley, which is an all-girls college. I actually, that's pretty, okay, yeah. yay, Wellesley. <laughs> Go Wellesley. Um, so I didn't know your mascot or anything. So yeah, um, but um, it, that's kind of interesting to grow up all around. I, I don't know. I, I think I would have loved it because I love my girlfriends. But at the same time, like, it would have been a wonderful thing. But at the same time, like, dating must have been hard for oh. that too. Yeah, because I mean, it's like, yeah, hello. Yeah. But you know, here's the. I mean, unless, unless you're into women, I guess. But yeah. But <laughs> but you know, I went to a really large public high school, and it was kind of a relief to be at an all women's college for those four years because. We only really dated on the weekends. Yeah. And, you know, you didn't really have to worry about boys you were interested in or that you thought there, were Those cute. pressures were taken away. Yeah, they were taken away. Yeah. And, I mean, we, you know, we had fun on the weekends. We had, you know, we had curfews. We had to be in really early. Uh, something unknown to young people today. But yeah. We had to be back in the dorm, like, by 10 o'clock or 11 yeah. o'clock at night. And, yeah, but it, it, so we would, we had things that were called mixers. This is yeah. way before your time. I know, Looking a mixer. at this audience. <laughs> I mean, you'd, so you'd, you'd go and you have a mixer with the, you know, with the men's colleges or you'd go to yeah. visit for a weekend uh, at one of the uh, colleges that were nearby. So, yeah, that's how you met people. It was yeah. totally artificial, but, you know, it, it gave you a chance to, you know, have fun, meet people. I met, you know, I, I dated a guy that I met there for a long time and, you know, it was good. We had yeah. a good time. Yeah. I want to talk about a specific date, though, because this is, like, so cute. Your first date, you and Bill, I... I <laughs> Can you tell everyone? I don't, you've probably told it, but I had never known this, and I thought it was so cute. Look at you little babies. <laughs> the little babies. Oh, my oh. God, so long ago. Um, you're, you're talking about a very uh, funny moment because we were in law school together, and we had, you know, kind of noticed each other. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we would walk past each other in the hallway or on the street going to and from uh, school. And then one day we were in the library, and I was at one end at a table studying, he was in another, and you know, every time I would look up, he'd be looking at me. So I finally, you know, I thought, this is ridiculous. I don't know who this guy is. And so I got up and I went and I said, if you're gonna keep looking at me and I'm gonna keep looking back, we should at least know each other's names. First, <laughs> That's so sexy and bold. Yeah. I love it. And then, yeah. like, like, two days later, we, had, we were in the same class together, but he never came to class, so I no. didn't know he was in that class. <laughs> but he showed up for the last class, and as we were walking out the door, he goes, where are you going? I said, well, I'm going to go register for classes for next year. So he followed me down to the, you know, the registrar's office, and I was standing in line, and he was chatting. We were chatting. And we get up to the registrar's office, and she, she looks up from the desk, and she sees Bill. She goes, what are you doing here? You already registered. He goes, oh, well, yeah, I was just with her. <laughs> and so Aww. I registered, and then we went for a long walk. And our first date was really a long walk, and we walked in front of the museum in New Haven where we were going to school, and they had an exhibit of the painter Rothko, who I really liked. And I said, oh, I'd love to go in there. He said, but it's closed. And he said, well, Excuse me. So he goes, and I mean, you know, my husband's very persuasive, and so yeah. he goes. He finds like the, you know, person the you know in charge working? of the yeah. yeah. So he finds the person working. Somehow, convinces the person to let us in, in return for picking up the trash in the yard. <laughs> 
So it was a fair trade. We picked yeah. up the trash, we went to the museum, and then we went to a diner and had a hamburger. Yeah, that was a private our first date at a museum. That's sexy. Yeah. Come on. It was great. I yes. mean, yeah. So. I love that story. <laughs> oh, it sounds like a movie that's not real, but it is for you. Congratulations. Um, <laughs>